are interrupting our program to give you the following message. Moonship RM-1, which left the space station a little over 51 hours ago, reports a distance of 169,000 miles from the Earth. The ship is traveling at 9,400 miles per hour, and deviations from the intended flight path have been so small that the captain reports no corrective power maneuver has been necessary as yet. We are happy to report all the crew are in good condition. This model will show you how our future moon rocket ship might be designed. It would be 53 feet in length, has no wings or tail surfaces, because it would be assembled and operated only in the vacuum of space. For the hull of the ship, we are adapting the cabin section of one of the Earth to Space Station passenger rockets. To the nose, we have added a small atomic reactor, which will drive a steam turbine and furnish electricity for the ship's instruments. This shield will protect the crew members from dangerous radiation. The ship's crew of four men will be placed two in the front and two back here. This is a directional radio radar antenna. Located underneath is the airlock for a spacesuit. The captain is the last man to come aboard. He will direct the entire expedition from his position at the front of the ship. After final instrument check, the ship's crew lock themselves in position for the blast off. Now, only minutes remain until firing time. The captain sets the automatic firing timer and reports to the space station. RM1 to station one, firing timer is engaged. to leave the orbit of the space station, its speed will have to be increased by firing the rocket for a brief period of 10 minutes. seconds. Cut off velocity 21,888 miles per hour. Cut off altitude 1,765.2 miles. 1.6 low. Okay. Now let's double check that star tracker with an optical and radar fix. Right. The primary purpose of the first moon trip will be to test the methods and equipment to be used on later voyages into deep space. It will be essentially a scouting trip around the moon and no landing will be attempted. Since the first half of the trip will take five days, we must aim the ship well ahead of the moon so that they both arrive at about the same point in space at the same time. As the 116th hour approaches, the navigator must act quickly to avoid a collision with the moon. He starts the tape selector, which will automatically correct the rocket's course by firing the motors for a precise number of seconds. RM-1, station one. At 116 hours, conducting power maneuver on correction tape 340. Out. The Earth's gravity begins to slow the rocket down until 121 hours later, at a point within 60 miles of the moon's surface, it will begin to fall back toward the Earth. Gradually picking up speed, it will take another five days to coast back to the space station. The next few hours will constitute the most important phase of the trip. The moon is sweeping past the ship at great speed. In a brief span of about three hours, all close-up observations of its unknown surface must be completed. The 
irresistible power of the Earth's gravity has now changed the rocket's direction and is pulling it with ever-increasing speed back to the space station. Set firing timer for 241 hours, 49 minutes, 11 seconds. Firing timer set. Stand by for power maneuver in 35 seconds. Fuel tank set for release. successful voyage into interplanetary space. This pioneer trip around the moon will soon be followed by an expedition which will actually land on the moon's surface. Even now, construction is going forward on the atomic-powered rocket ship that will challenge the limitless depths of space and solve the mystery of the red planet Mars. <laughs> 